Hello, I'm George and I am back in the iconic Barossa Valley in South Australia. A little later today I'll be stopping into the Barossa Valley estate, but right now I'm at Peter Lehman estate where I'm going to be taking a tour of these beautiful grounds and tasting some of their delicious wines. Welcome to the Cellar Door. So Nigel, we're here at the beautiful and historic Peter Lehman estate, where yes. you are chief winemaker, among many other things. Correct, I wear yeah. a few hats here, but yeah. uh, the most important obviously is chief winemaker. Yeah, yep. and so you are in charge of the team who make the wines? Correct, so mm -hmm. um, ranging from viticulturalists, cellar hands, cellar managers, winemakers, and the, and the lab, just mm -hmm. to name a few. Yeah. And it's a pretty big operation here. Yes, we have about probably 70 full-time employees on site. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it does take a little bit to manage the day-to-day is going on. Yeah. Speaking of the site, it is epic and beautiful and steeped in history. Exactly. We're so fortunate to have this site here at Peter Lehman. The cellar door is located on a, an old Hoffman winery site, which was built in the mid-1800s. Oh, wow. That's... Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Mm. And when the Peter and Margaret took over, they built the cellar door onto this place and uh, to what you see today, where we have meeting rooms and a lo lovely large area with a kitchen. And we also have accommodation on site now as well. So you sort of covered all elements of hospitality. Exactly, and that's, uh, I think that goes back to the Lehman in the original days, are always uh, very hospitable hosts. Mm. So and we like to continue that to this day. Yeah. So there's a real philosophy of community that, that Peter Lehman and Margaret Lehman began and continues on. Yeah, and that's, uh, oh, like, I can't overstate too much that they really were about the community and uh, right from the very beginning, how the winery came into being, mm. was uh, Peter's attempt to save the local community and, in the local area. So yeah, no, it's a, it's a strong part of who we are. Yeah, so Peter and Margaret bought the winery. Yeah, so in the late 70s, there was a really uh, large oversupply in the Barossa and the Australian wine industry in general. And mm -hmm. uh, Peter at the time was a winery manager and chief winemaker for a large multinational company. Uh, he was uh, told uh, by the board that, uh, Peter, we don't need any grapes this year. Uh, you need to go out and tell all your growers that uh, we'll not be harvesting any fruit this year and we'll, we'll have a look at it again next year. So, Which look, would be devastating yeah, for Yeah, for a lot of these growers, mm. that's their only source of income. Uh, obviously, there have been a few tight years already, so it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of money floating around the Barossa anyway, and this would have been a final blow for a lot of farmers. So Peter couldn't let that happen, in all honesty. So mm. um, he begged, borrow and stole. He managed to put together a winery and uh, promised the growers, well, by that stage, he fully uh, mortgaged himself up. There was no more money available. Mm -hmm. So he had to, he asked the growers that, um, look guys, I've spent all the money I have on building this winery for us. I don't have any money left over to pay for the fruit, but I promise you I'll make the wine and then we'll sell the wine and I promise I'll pay you first and I'll pay myself last. And, and they took him at his word? And they took him at his word and we think that's a really nice way of doing business because yeah. we know that uh, we have to look after the growers and hopefully the growers feel the same way about us. And Peter Lehman it sort of is involved in growers in every region in the Barossa because the Barossa is obviously a huge region, very varied. Yeah, no, definitely. So we've got growers uh, from the length and breadth of the Barossa Valley, so from the very south to the north and even swinging around into Eden Valley as well. So we're very fortunate, which still allows us to blend and make some amazing wines uh, at each different vintage, no matter what the conditions are. Mm -hmm. 
we have a, a product called The Futures, and that's paying homage to Peter Lehman uh, and the agreement that he originally had with the growers, where if you give me the grapes now, and I promise I'll pay you in the future. And uh, it just ties in nicely, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a, probably one of the best stories, I think, in the Australian wine industry. Yeah, well, yeah. Peter Lehman seems to have a lot of beautiful stories. Yeah, like uh, sometimes you think uh, with a lot of people that uh, the reputation precedes the man, but I genuinely believe that Peter uh, really uh, did care about the community and mm. it really was important to him that uh, members of the community uh, were able to remain and, and he prosper. Was, yeah. yeah, Oh, and it's certainly worked out. Yeah, no, we, and we still try to continue that to this day. That's uh, a really part, an important part of who we are still. And um, Peter was a very present uh, element at the winery wasn't he sort of hanging out at his little spot? That's right, and uh, you know, he was always making sure that everyone was working hard and doing the right <laughs> things. So he was, a, he was a tough man, he was a hard man, but he was a fair, very fair, fair as well. So <laughs> everyone knew what to expect. We all turned up, we all worked very hard, and, uh, and that, you need to do that to experience the success that we've had. Mm. And there's a sort of overarching philosophy that your entire team adhere to with the winemaking. We all know that why we're founded and it's important that we're always extracting and working hard and making the best wine possible to ensure that the future of future generations of grape growers in the Barossa and that's something we do carry around and that's a good motivating force for us. Mm. Yeah. And happy 40th birthday to the winery. It is, yeah, that's very exciting. Yeah. So, uh, you yeah, know, not many wineries have, we've had a lot of ups and downs at Peter Lehman and it's just really great that we're, we're, we are where we are at the moment. So, mm. hopefully we're around for another 40 years as well. I certainly hope so. Thanks. <laughs>
So um, in a winemaking role and a, a management role there. Mm -hmm. so and so you've sort of transitioned into the Peter Lehman family. Correct, and yeah. you know, it's been a really smooth transition. I've got a really fantastic team of winemakers, growers and viticulturalists, so mm -hmm. uh, it's made the transition very easy. Do you have a pet wine or a pet project here that Sure, like you live in the Barossa Valley, so yep. Shiraz. I love making Shiraz. It uh, <laughs> just makes some fantastic wines and has beautiful tannin structure and uh, beautiful fruit weight. So, mm -hmm. uh, no, um, living in the Barossa, Shiraz is definitely my passion. And, yep. you know, going forward with the new team of winemakers, really looking to do some innovative things and drive the quality of Shiraz in the Barossa Valley. Yeah. What about, are there any like, new varieties that you're dabbling in or? So uh, Tempranillo is something that we've been looking at in the last few years and we're quite excited what it's doing in the Barossa Valley. So a little bit more medium body than uh, the typical Shiraz we make here at Peter Lehman Wines, mm -hmm. but uh, just a really beautifully balanced wine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're a red man? Of course. Yeah. Oh, you know, white in summer, red yeah. in winter. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Classic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
vine age on this wine would be over 50 years. Okay. And we just find those older vines really give that nice fine tannin mm. structure that we're looking for for this wine. Mm -hmm. And you take your grapes from the various growers in the region? Correct. So mm. we've got growers in all 13 sub-regions of the Barossa Valley. So depending on the year, each sub-region performs a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. But um, no, it's really uh, fantastic to be able to see fruit from all the different sub-regions. Bringing everyone together. Correct. Into a yummy little glass. Oh yes. So still a nice mm. ripe style, but I think the, the main thing to note with this wine is the tannin structure. It's just beautiful. Mm. But still very gentle. That yes. Sort of like a warm, spicy. Yeah. Mm. Yum. So Good. that's the eight songs. Yes. And you said it was the Mad King? Eight songs eight of, song the of the Mad King. Eight songs of the Mad King is a play. Of course it is. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the, the story goes that there's lots of really nice soft melodies in this play, and so that ah. sort of carries through to the soft tannin structure of this blend. And did Peter Lehman name the wine himself, or Peter and Margaret named it? Yeah, themselves? Peter and Margaret named all these wines here today. Excellent. Yes. So Nigel, this is where all the little baby wines come to grow up? That's right, so mm -hmm. this is uh, one of three sheds, mm -hmm. so they each hold about 6,000 barrels each. That is a lot. It is a lot and mm -hmm. it takes a lot of winemakers and a lot of cellar hands to make sure everything's as it should be. Mm -hmm. yeah. All these sheds are temperature controlled, humidity mm -hmm. controlled, so these wines just sit here quietly and uh, mature into a really nice product. So Nigel, before we dip into the fabulous Stonewell, which I'm very excited about, uh, let's have a little chat about the Wigan and the Mentor. Sure. So originally when Peter left uh, the winery to come and found Peter Lehman Wines, uh, his off-sider, off Andrew Wigan, came, came along with him. Mm -hmm. So this wine is a tribute to Andrew Wigan, who is probably one of Australia's best known uh, Riesling makers. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a really beautiful wine. Once again, this is an age release. So the wine making is relatively simple. We package it nice and early, put it in the cellars for five years mm -hmm. and bring it up to a release. So a really good example of an aged Riesling. So is Wigan hanging out down in the cellar with Margaret? Exactly, yeah. Age? They're all sitting down there next to each other having a good time, definitely. <laughs> I bet they are. Yeah. Uh, and so did Peter name the mentor himself? Or? No, Peter didn't name the mentor, but uh, it is a reference to Peter. So his son Doug uh, was trying to think of a really good name for uh, the mentor, they wanted to call it in, in a reference or a play on Peter Lehman Wines, but uh, Peter had none of it. So Doug actually uh, quite on the sneaky named it Mentor, Great. And, uh, but it is named after Peter himself. <laughs> gotcha, Dad. Well, let's move on to the Stonewell, which is a very prestigious wine. Sure, this is a special wine for mm. Peter Lehman Wines, uh, as we've gone through the history of Peter Lehman Wines. Uh, the early days were quite difficult. Uh, once we got through that difficult period, uh, Peter really looked to excel and really looked to make a, a name for the winery. And his first attempt at that was to make the Stonewell Shiraz. So mm -hmm. that was really exciting. That really, this wine really put Peter Lehman Wines on the map uh, as it won the Jimmy Watson Trophy in its yeah. first year. So it was a, a really transitional moment for the winery. Uh, and so the first year that it was released was the Jimmy Watson's year. Yes. And it was only released in Magnums? Correct. So. Times were still tough at Peter Lehman Wines and uh, we couldn't waste anything. So it was decided for the first release, we had some Magnum, Magnum bottles around. So the entire first release was done in Magnum. Just use what you got. Exactly. Yeah. So let's have a taste. Mm, yes, please. So this, which vintage is this one? 2013. Mm -hmm. And is this current release? Correct. So this is a really full bodied style of Shiraz. Mm, so the colour really, so deep. Yeah, really yeah. nice, powerful tannin structure. There's some nice development in there as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a really interesting wine. Mm. So nice, rich, ripe and powerful. A good example of uh, traditional Barossa Ooh. Shiraz. Mm. It's got quite a, a like, savoury end to it. Mm. Mm. So yeah, once again, that's a five year um, age release. Mm -hmm. So we'll package it probably after, depending on the vintage between say 14 to 18 months in oak, 
We'll put it down in the warehouse yeah. for five years. So it it's the really, oakiness. Mm. Really let it develop those really nice characters. Mm. Okay. Nigel, thank you so much for having me. I've had such a lovely time here. No, that's fine. You're welcome anytime. Thank you. Uh, right now, I think we should get stuck into this beautiful platter of local goods, including your special Metworths. Exactly, yeah. No, yeah. Let's, let's have a go. Yeah, let's work on our own dent on this bar. Yeah. Whilst filming the cellar door in the Barossa Valley, our crew chose to stay at Barossa Idol. This unique, architecturally designed mid-century home, beautifully furnished and restored in the style of the era, provides an indulgent Barossa experience or perfect home away from home for a large group or family. Spacious bedrooms, extensive outdoor area, with breathtaking views and plenty of room to relax. Plus, you are only a few minutes walk from the wonderful town centre of Tanunda. To book your stay at Barossa Idol, head to www.barossaidol.com. Ryan, you are the general manager of viticulture and winemaking here at Barossa Valley Estates. That's right, George, yes. Brilliant. What a beautiful place to work. It's a gorgeous place to work and, and we have to pinch ourselves every day here when we look out the window and we're amongst the vines and the beautiful garden here at Barossa Valley Estate yeah. and uh, it really is stunning and, and the Barossa Valley is a special part of the world and this is our little special corner of it. I've been here since 2013, mm -hmm. so midway through 2013. So, yeah, so getting on to six vintages now, um, which is fantastic, and that's how we count it. We don't necessarily count years; we, no. we count vintages in yes. the game. So, yep. yeah, but it's a nice stint, and we've um, we've made some really great changes and some really good growth uh, in that that period of time. And mm -hmm. certainly, you know, the cellar door has been a big part of that, but also our, our viticulture and our winemaking here on, on the estate. So this cellar door has been open for about a year? Yeah, we, we've spent a lot of time refurbishing the cellar door. We've had it open for a year now and um, we've essentially uh, used the existing shell that was here mm -hmm. And, and just refitted the interior and created a whole new experience for it's our visitors. Very nice. <laughs> Wrapped this beautiful garden around it, which, um, which we can explore later, but yeah. it gives it a really lovely setting. And we've brought the vineyard right up into the area around cellar door so people can be here enjoying the wines and equally wander out into the garden and have Shiraz on one side, Cabernet Sauvignon on the other and really immerse in, in these great varietals that we grow here in the Barossa Valley. Mm, and those are the two classic Barossa. They really are, yeah. I think if, if time's taught us anything is that the Barossa Valley is a great red wine making region. Certainly Shiraz is a real hero here and Cabernet Sauvignon is a great varietal um, you know, with a uh, worldwide following. Mm. So. Um, they're both varietals that are really key to us and we enjoy making here and make very well in the valley. Um, the other one is, is a blend and that's Grenache Shiraz Mavedra. Mm. Um, and that's something that the Barossa has done for, uh, for many years very well. We have a real special you know, part of our, our portfolio, I guess, dedicated to producing a really lovely GSM and it's an important part of our focus. And colloquially, in-house, you know, people ask, well, what's GSM stand for? And sometimes we say, it's good stuff, mate, or get some more. <laughs> so it's become a real staple of our lineup. So we have a, a focused lineup of, of wines. It's, it's, it's those three, mm. a Shiraz, a Cabernet Sauvignon, and a GSM. So Ryan, this is the entry point into the estate. It is, George, yes. This is the, the lovely entrance that people get when they arrive to sell a door. I mean, mm. we proceeds down into the gardens that are, uh, I guess, bookended by the vineyard. So it it's really- It's almost like it was expertly designed. It was, exactly. <laughs> so um, it's the largest perennial gardens in Australia designed by a leading designer, Paul Bangay. In all of Australia? Who's a well-known, um, you know, personality around the world in terms of garden design. Mm. So yeah, it's been a really, I think, large format project uh, for him and for us. That's really lovely to be able to bring it together. Beautiful grassed areas and these sort of sweeping curved perennial garden beds. Mm. And they've really got something for all seasons. So you're celebrating the spring growth, you can be celebrating summer colour, and then you move into autumnal colours and garden structure and, and as the plants move through the seasons. So, 
I think it's really fitting to celebrate the region in terms of its very definite seasonality mm -hmm. and much like the vineyards and the wines, um, it's, it's a really sort of lovely feature. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. And you've got little little spots sort of tucked in where people can yeah. squirrel away. And you can sit in these areas, grab a bottle of wine and a lovely platter from Celador or a complimentary pour of our rosé. Okay. Wander the grounds, find a space and then look out over the vineyards that make some of these great wines and, and across to the Barossa range. So I know often winemakers say that wines are like children and you're not supposed to have favourites, but uh, do you have one? Well, I've got four children, so can I have four favourite wines? Sure, you can. I won't do it's that very to you, diplomatic of you. <laughs> I, I, I love the e and &E Black Pepper Shiraz. Mm. It is, a, a, I think it's a defining style, it's a defining wine, and it's always a pleasure to make. Mm -hmm. It's one of those wines that you grow with across a number of years, and I think that's what I really enjoy the most about it, is that from harvest through to actually pouring a glass mm -hmm. can be three to four years. Mm -hmm. So you've got that entire process from the vineyard right through to individual barrel selection to, I guess, grow and understand each one of those wines. Um, you know, for more than 25 years, the the e and &E wine has really forged itself as a defining wine of the Barossa Valley. It's it's one of those great examples that stands up with the others from the region. Rare parcels in the right vintage that exhibit that real intense black pepper character, coupled with a lovely intensity, complexity, and concentration of rich fruit. It really is from the vineyard, it's mm. a vineyard selection. It's not necessarily the same vineyard every year, mm. but it's essentially the best of what we can do. So Ryan, the Barossa Valley Estate has been on this site for about 20 years, Correct. but the collective was born a while before that. Is it right? was, yeah. So Barossa Valley Estate was really forged from a group of growers coming together. So um, local generational um, grape growing families in the Barossa Valley who, who banded together to, um, I think, celebrate their vineyards and, and convert those great sites and those great wines into, um, into great wines to take to the world. So uh, what we like to do is, I guess, really, you know, celebrate our past, yet, you know, focus on the future and the, the future is where we thrive. So. Um, it has a great history in that regard and a number of our growers are still um, some of those original families that were involved in starting Barossa Valley Estate that are now fifth and sixth generation growers nice. on their vineyards. So it's really a special story and it's something that's uh, I think quite unique and special about the Barossa Valley. And you've sort of given a nod to that history with your one of your walls in the cellar door is made of Stones from a grower's Yeah, one so of um, uh, one of the, the growing, the grower families, um, the, the, the Fifers, their stone is featured in the wall here and, uh, and also through parts of the, uh, the other buildings on site. So it's stone that's come out of their vineyard um, and been built here uh, into the cellar door. And it's a really nice reflection, I think, of, of the region, of the soil, of the rocks, to really incorporate some of those features that essentially come from the vineyards that make the wines mm -hmm. um, into. Uh, into the structures that are that are around us and, and help us host and immerse people into the uh, into the wines and the environment here. This particular environment is a rather exciting one. It's the E and E room. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Tell so, us about the wine tasting that you offer with the E. &E. It, was, it was a special part of the project here was to give E and E a home within cellar door. So. Uh, an area where you could step aside and spend some time with E and E and celebrating, you know, what it is as a as a really definitive wine um, and a great example of a Shiraz that will age across time. So this is an experience that we uh, have created for customers who want to spend some time with E and E and will appreciate uh, a 20 year old vintage and then a couple of more recent up through to our current vintages. Mm. So essentially lining up some glasses and, and having that span of time and looking at how cellaring will um, reward people um, over time. They can obviously enjoy the fresh vintage now, but then see where, you know, 
five, 10, 15 or 20 years might take that. And, mm. and at the moment with the 2016 uh, and, and as a current release, spanning back to 1999. Mm. So a wine there that's you know 20 or over 20 years old um, on tasting at cellar door. We don't have too many bottles, so we're not selling them, but <laughs> we can certainly pull them out of the museum and share them with, uh, with visitors so who great. want to indulge in that experience. Yeah, that's wonderful. So you've got this kind of picture of, of what the wine does as it ages, but also what happened that year. I guess there's a bit of a story in the bottle of how that year went and the, what That's went into right. the vintage. E and E as a wine is uh, not single vineyard, but comes from a relatively restricted source. So some blocks off of company vineyards, but also some grower blocks. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's not... still maintaining that collective Yeah, it, it is. And it's still um, a blended wine. So mm -hmm. it's multiple parcels. Um, that come together to form the best of what we can do from that year. And what e, e is, it's more of a celebration, I think, of, of the nuance of vintage as well. Mm -hmm. And vintage is one of those things that uh, is, is, I think, the sum of the, the weather conditions we got and how the vines performed in that season. And each year brings its own little nuances. Mm. And a wine like E&E e really celebrates that. Yeah. And we don't ever get the same year twice. We can do all the research, all the science, all the experience that we want, but it's really about how do you pull all those things together with the condition set and the fruit that the season presents, pull it together to celebrate um, that season and to craft a really lovely wine from it. Mm. So it's a big part of it. This DNA. one seems to have cork missing. It does. Oh. The cork, unfortunately, well, fortunately, what are we going to do about that? Is absent, so <laughs> Let's I think we should celebrate the year of 2016. I think we should have a look. So tell me about the vintage, because you were here for 2016 vintage, obviously. 2016 is a really, really strong vintage, um, regarded locally as probably one of the strongest vintages in recent years, um, if not even longer years, depending on how old the winemaker is you talk to, is <laughs> how much reference they'll give it. But a very expressive wine, mm -hmm. lovely concentrated fruit. You've got a real nice mix of ripe red fruits through to some of those darker plums, mm -hmm. um, black cherry fruits as well. It just jumps out of the glass. And then there's that lovely overlay of dark spice and oak yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. And E&E &E is a wine that receives roughly 18 months of maturation, maybe a little bit more for a vintage like 16. But that's really just the beginning. At that time, the, the oak and the fruit are still a little bit apart. So we bottle the wine and then afford it another 18 months of maturation in the cellar as a bottled wine. So essentially in bottle, just conditioning and coming together before it's released to market. Well, let's, uh, let's get in there. It's delicious. So there's, there's a real concentration of fruit, but it's still quite gentle. It is. It's a wine that's, that's got this seamless sophistication and there's a real restrained power about it. Mm. So that concentration of fruit's a key element and then it just follows through with these lovely silky tannins that are approachable now, yet have this great fullness and structure that will mean it can last mm. out to 20 years and, and comfortably sell her as a, a wine that should be enjoyed at any period of time. Um, that someone chooses to pull it out. And can be enjoyed here. Can be enjoyed e here. Room. Best enjoyed here. Yeah, great. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>has been sort of in your blood really isn't it because you grew up it has amongst yeah. the vines so to speak exactly yeah so I'm I'm originally from the Barossa Valley and have spent some time you know traveling as you do when you get into the wine industry you go and see a bit of the world get some perspective learn different varieties learn from different winemakers uh, see some different regions and some different climates and it all forms this great tapestry of knowledge and experience that you can draw on mm -hmm. and I think it's a really important part of, of growing in the wine industry but it's also a really lovely feature of being a part of the wine industry is that you can travel the world and there's this great 
I think, collegial link between winemakers and this ability and desire to share. So um, I grew up in Eden Valley, which is just over the hill from here. Um, <laughs> Hi, Mum and Dad. Exactly. <laughs> They're over there on the vineyard still. And, um, and that really whet my appetite for getting into winemaking. So after working in the vineyard, started with a, a local vintage as a 17-year-old lad out of high school. Um, quickly tacked on a, a Northern Hemisphere vintage in California and then formalised my studies through the Adelaide University. I, I couldn't wish for more to be back in the Barossa Valley working for a winery that's called Barossa Valley Estate, <laughs> yeah. um, which is really a, you know, a, a pin for the region mm -hmm. and, and to be using all of that knowledge and experience. Such a wealth to, of experience. Exactly. To, it, it's, it's really enjoyable to be able to bring that to the table and be able to, you know, I guess, craft and and also you know, I guess respect and protect um, you know those great wine styles for the region now and, and moving forwards into the future. You were giving me a very interesting potted history of the Barossa before. You know I think in terms of a modern sense it, it stretches back into the 1840s when uh, people um, you know moved out here immigrated out here to bring their culture and I think to save their culture and elements of their religion that they were mm. they were looking to preserve and brought with them all of their great skills um, all of their all of their beliefs and, and importantly their vine cuttings and <laughs> moved into the region to I think just you know pursue a life that they wanted to have mm. and that and sort of stands to this day it stands to this day and, and I think you look at buildings like the the church and the stone that's used in and around the cellar door here, features that, you know, bring history to the place. Yeah. The Grenache Shiraz Mavedra, first wine in the lineup mm -hmm. of this uh, current vintage release tasting. So mm -hmm. one of the experiences that you can have here at Cellar Door is to work through the, the three core wines mm -hmm. uh, that are of current release. So Grenache Shiraz Mavedra, blend of three varietals and a really lovely drinking wine and a really food friendly wine and a great style out of the region. And do you always start with the GSM in your flat? We do. It's a lightly oaked wine. It's mm -hmm. aged in what are seasoned barrels or used barrels, barrels that have been used previously on the Shiraz. Mm -hmm. um, so they've, they're a bit more gentler? They're a bit gentler and they've given up that new oak and that, um, that, that more structured um, contribution to the Shiraz wine, mm -hmm. which is uh, naturally a, a bigger wine mm. in that regard. So this is more about having the barrel as a, I think, more of a conditioning vessel. So allowing the, the, the blend to come together and age and soften in the barrels as opposed to bringing any real new oak influence to the wine. So mm -hmm. it's really a celebration of the fruit mm -hmm. and how these three varietals can come together and really sing in the glass. Let's listen to that melody. So Grenache Shiraz Mavedra, it's blended in that way, predominantly Grenache, Yum. <laughs> then Shiraz, and then the Mavedra. And typically we're around a third, a third, a third, so just slightly more Grenache than Shiraz, mm -hmm. which is slightly higher than the Mavedra. The Grenache brings that really lovely, bright, red fruit. Um, the Shiraz brings some, some mid-palate roundness mm -hmm. and really that generosity on the palate. And the Mavedra I always like, it just gives that little bit of length in the palate, um, brings some darker fruit characters mm. and a real nice spice character to the wine as well. So really just all of these fruit characteristics humming together and coming out of the glass. I, th I think I should revisit after that, I should definitely. So the next in the lineup, which is a little bit unusual perhaps, mm. is Cabernet Sauvignon in terms of the sequence that we tasted in. Okay, yep. So Cabernet Sauvignon in the Barossa Valley um, brings a lovely, I think, ripe, fruited character mm. to the Cabernet. And you still get those nuances of Cabernet, which is a real 
black current characteristic and it's vital that you can capture that out in the vineyard because it can be quite fleeting in the Barossa. Mm -hmm. But what it does do is we've got these lovely Mediterranean type climate here that really affords lots of sunshine over summer, lots of warmth and ample time for these tannins to get ripe. So the Cabernets are quite fulsome, lovely long palate and there's a real lot of texture on there to back up the fruit. It's such a bright nose. I really like mm. our Cabernet to just jump out of the glass with those real black currant, dark yeah. berry, boysenberry style characteristics. And then just have this subtle overlay of oak that just brings a little bit of spice and a little bit of toast and, yeah, and very darkness quiet to it. Oak just to show you there's a bit more to come. So. Yeah. A really lovely wine, again really yeah. fruit food friendly and really focused on championing that fruit, that real great regional varietal match. So, mm. you know, Cabernet can be a great star out of the Barossa. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a star. So this is the 2017? Yeah, the 2017 Shiraz and all of these wines are those, the current release, the 2017. So we taste those in, a, in that lineup, mm -hmm. same vintage. Yep secondary tasting that we do is a, an offer where you can have the current release wine and then a wine that's two, three and sometimes four vintages older. Mm. So you can really see the rewards of ageing and how the wine changes over time and go along on that journey to select a wine that you like. And in Celador here we, we have that experience but we also have those wines, those back vintage wines available for people to purchase which is a bit of a unique offering and, yeah. and not done at every Celador so it's a nice feature. So again, a very fruit focused wine. Mm. There is some nice new oak in there, but it just plays but into again, the background. It's so integrated. Integration, mm. it's about support of the fruit, and it's about really you know, lifting that fruit profile and pushing it out. Um, all of the wines drink really well upon release, but that rewards of cellaring tasting mm. shows you that they can go out five, six, seven, eight years and, and really reward the cellaring potential and give those customers a chance to buy a six pack, lay it down and enjoy it across a period of time or enjoy it right now, yeah. ready drinking, ready to go tonight for dinner. Yeah. Ryan, thank you so much for having me at this beautiful estate and for sharing these gorgeous wines with me. Well, it's been great having you here and we, we look forward to seeing you again. Yeah, I can't wait to come back. I hope you've enjoyed your time in the Barossa as much as I have. That's all from me for today, but don't forget if you want to catch up on old episodes, check out our YouTube channel. I'll see you next time.